Thanks for watching. I'm Margot Kinberg, and this is In the Spotlight, a closer look at a crime novel. If there's one thing that you can say about the country of India is that really there is no one India. It's got many cultures, traditions, backgrounds, and so on. Let's take a look today at a little piece of India and turn today's spotlight on Harini Nagendra's The Bangalore Detectives Club. The story takes place in 1921 Bangalore, during the last years of the British Rav. Kaveri Murta has moved to the city after marrying her doctor husband, Ramu. She's working out how she's going to fit in and getting used to being a wife. On the one hand, she and Ramu are happy in their marriage, but she doesn't want the confined life that many women of the times have. She's done well academically and is continuing to study, and she wants to make use of her skills and her intelligence. She gets her chance one night when she and Ramu attend an event at the Century Club, one of the few clubs that isn't exclusively for the British. During the evening, Kaveri decides to get a brush of fresh air. So she goes out into the club's garden, where she sees a man having what looks like an argument with a beautiful woman. About half an hour later, that man, who is a local pimp named Ponuswami, is found murdered. Detective Inspector Ismail investigates and he begins by interviewing everyone at the event. In the meantime, Manju Gauda, the regular milkman, has gone missing. He was at the event serving and as it turns out, he could have committed the murder. It's not helping his case that he's disappeared and in any case, his family very much needs his income. So Kaveri wants to find him. Then there's an attack on another person. Soon enough, Kaveri is drawn into this mystery. Who killed the dead man? Where is Manju? And who is the woman who was seen with the victim before his murder? What might she know? With help from Ramu and from her next door neighbor, Kaveri starts putting the pieces of the puzzle together. She's going to have to be careful, though. As both Ramu and Ismail tell her, this murderer will not hesitate to kill again and is a dangerous person. So what are the elements that hold this novel together? What keeps it going? One of the most important elements in the novel is its setting in time and place. Now, Gender depicts Bangalore in terms of the physical setting, its clothes, its culture, and its social structure. The local language is used here and there, always with definitions or context. Along with that, Nagendra explores the social roles of the time. The story is told from Kaveri's point of view, third person, past tense. So readers see what it's like to be a young Indian woman from one of the better classes. Ladies like her are not expected to spend time in certain neighborhoods or with certain kinds of people and certainly not alone. They're expected to stay home and take care of their families. At the same time, Kaveri sees the classism of the Raj who treat the Indians with condescension or worse at times. That said though, it's important to note that several of the British characters in the book see their Indian peers as equals. They're not all bad guys. Within this context are the young couple, Kaveri and Ramu. They're just getting to know each other. And as the novel goes on, they begin to see the good in each other. Kaveri loves her husband and wants to make a good home for him, although she wants more from life than just keeping house. For his part, Ramu comes to respect his wife's intelligence, wit, and cleverness. It's an interesting look at the way a new relationship develops. The mystery itself is solved as Kaveri, Ramu, and Ismail share information and put the pieces of the puzzle together. And they find the link between the murder, the attack, and Manju's going missing. The Bangalore Detectives Club introduces a determined, clever amateur sleuth who refuses to conform to what is expected of her. It features a distinctive 1920s Bangalore setting and a solid murder puzzle. This has been In the Spotlight. I'm Margot Kinberg. Thanks for watching.